Hello, screen printers. Matt here with NorCal Screen Print Supply. Uh, today we're going to run through a quick two color separation uh, in Adobe Illustrator. We're going to do a base white and a top color. So you see here we have our logo that we're working with today. Uh, two color, we're going to pretend that black is white so we can see it in Adobe Illustrator. Um, let's make sure we have the size before we get started. So uh, 11 inches wide, that should be cool for our full chest print. So first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and select everything here with Command A. And I'm going to go ahead and copy that, create a new layer, and with Command F, I'm going to paste the new layer exactly over the other layer. So now we have two of the same thing. So what I'm going to go ahead and do with the first layer, since this is just going to be green sitting on top of white, it's going to be real easy for registration. Uh, all that good stuff should be very simple. So we'll go ahead and use our magic wand and select the green and just turn it black. Okay, so now we have a solid white underbase for our print. We'll go ahead and label that white. Oops. I may have done that to both layers here, so let's step back real quick. Let's do this and just copy the green, actually. So now we have a top layer of just green. Go back here again, select our magic wand, convert to black. So now we have a white layer and we have a green layer. Okay, so on this print, we're not gonna have to worry about trapping or anything crazy like that. Green's just gonna sit nicely over the white. So this one's gonna be real easy for us. So let's go ahead and select this green, convert that to black for our film. rid of this layer real quick. Okay, so we have green and white. And we'll go ahead and make a layer for our registration marks. Place those into the file. I'm using Option to duplicate, click, and drag. Same thing for the other side. Okay, and now we have our six points of registration. Go ahead and label our layers here. We'll send them to the printer. Let's see, the 12s are good. All right, and print that out. Let's go ahead and solo our green layer. Label that one. And send that to our second printer. All right, and there we have it. Very simple two color, um, no trapping necessary. Green's gonna sit right over top of white. Um, so we'll send films to the printer and get it printed. Okay, so we're gonna run through printer settings here real quick, just so that uh, you know you know what your settings are supposed to be set at uh, to get the best 
most solid black film. So we'll go into the print dialog box here and we'll go to setup. And from this dialog box, you're gonna to wanna to go to print settings. And you can go ahead and save a preset once you have this all configured. Um, you go like save current settings as preset, which we have here with films. So we're on an Epson 4800 here. It's a roll printer that's borderless. So we have our roll paper set. Make sure that we're set to uh, premium photo glossy photo paper. Uh, here we only print black. So you can, you know, if you're printing with all black cartridges, you can set it to color. If you're just filling your black cartridge with black, like we do here, um, we do black in the black cartridge and distilled water in the rest of our cartridges to essentially fool the printer into thinking that it has ink in it. So it saves you a bunch of ink that way too. Um, that's really only if you, have, if you have refillable cartridges. So for our, for our instance here, we're gonna make sure it's set to black. Um, most printers, you're gonna wanna go to like highest quality or um, uh, like slowest speed. Uh, if you have a really high quality printer, you can have it set to high speed and it's gonna, still gonna come out okay. Um, in our instance, it comes out perfect. Uh, high speed works for us. But generally, best quality or slowest speed is gonna be like your way to get the best quality film. So after that, you can save your current settings as preset and then go back and click print and then you should be set. And then uh, from there on out, just make sure that when you click print, um, you know, you have your settings selected and you should be good to go. All right, so we got our films and we're gonna hand them off to our screen tech, Graham here. Got him. All right, so I grabbed a 130 for the white underbase. Uh, with a multicolor design, it's important to line up your screen or line up your film on the screen. The same for both screens. I like to put the reg mark at um, three and three fourths. And that roughly puts the artwork at five inches from the edge of the frame. Check our center again. Now you can have a chance to check the emulsion and make sure you don't have any dust or um, particles of any sort in your print area or overlapping your artwork and the um, blocked emulsion. So we look like we're good. And we are exposing for 25 seconds. Um, I just put the screen in the water tank and that loosens up the emulsion. And then now I can set up the second design, our second layer. And here we'll swap the screens. You can see that the water has loosened the emulsion, making it much easier to wash out. This step is not necessary, but it's really nice and speeds up your workflow. Um, for washing out a screen, I like to start farther back, and if there's any uh, emulsion that's sticking, I, I get a little bit closer in increments, and that is to not wash out any of the hardened emulsion, because if you get too close, you're gonna wash out information or detail. And, um, it's better to wash out on the print side 
because that is where we put two coats of emulsion and it's also the side that we expose so that's going to be more durable um, to withstand the pressure washer. I give it a flip and a spray from farther back to rinse off any excess emulsion on the other side. And then once that's done, check and see if you've washed out all the emulsion. And here's when you can check for any imperfections. <laughs> and then I put it up against my car. <laughs> Do not try that at home. <laughs> now we have our two screens drying in the sun. And once they're dry, we can tape them up and get them on press. All right, so our screens are now dry from out in the sun. Um, they got post exposed by the UV light from the sun. Um, and that's just uh, further hardening the emulsion. Um, you want the tape to be, whoops, in the uh, corner as close as possible. And that will help keep your, clean, your screens clean. And it won't get in the way when you're printing. Um, we will be taping the registration marks on press after we get the artwork registered. Thanks, Grim. Yeah. All right, so we got the screens looking good. We're in a good spot here. We're going to put them on press. We're going to register this two color print and we're going to show you how to do that. And then we're going to print a sample print and then we're going to print a finished product. So. Here we go. I'm going to start out by putting my white screen into the screen clamp here and I'm going to bring it down. And Matt has put our registration marks and center lines on this screen. So just with the screen clamp here, I can loosen it and I can line up these center lines to be right in the center of the platen. It's a tremendous help. So I don't have to put the screen down here, measure on each side. Okay. You know, the edge of the print is two inches on this side, two inches on that side. I can just line it up with these center lines. Boom, it's lined up, it's centered. So that's always a good thing to do on your artwork. Before you print out your films, put the center line in and then you have them on every screen. It's easy to center your print. So have that centered. I'm gonna check my print head because I want to make sure that my, that my print head is not all the way out or all the way back. And that's known as zeroing out your print heads so that when you go to register your, your print, uh, you have plenty of room to move the screen in any direction that you need to. But if this is all the way back, then I won't be able to move it around if I need to move it back further. So I just make sure that it's not. And I use these, which are XY, my, uh, XY registration to get this centered out. That looks good, I like it. I'm gonna lock that down. Let me come back over here and just make sure my print is centered again. Right where I want it. Love it. That's it right there. Okay, I'm going to place our next screen into our screen clamp. Usually tighten down one and then lower it. And then loosen it if I need to. Just a habit. doesn't really matter how you do it. So I got that one centered. I'm going to go ahead and clamp it in. Looks good. So there's a number of different ways to register your print. What I generally like to do is print the first color and flash dry that and then register the next color to it. You can also put your film onto your platen and you can register all the colors to the film. So 
I think we're going to go ahead and give that a run through. We're actually going to try putting the film onto the platen and register the colors to it first. This is kind of a combination of things I'm doing here that's kind of hard to explain, but you got to get the film in the right spot or close to where you have the screen coming down. That makes it a lot easier. So you don't, when we bring the screen down, we won't have to move it too far to get the registration marks to line up. So I'll go ahead and bring this down. You can see here, they're pretty close already. We're going to get these ones to line up right here. And then our print will be registered or this screen will be registered. So we're going to loosen our print head. And I have a, a certain way that I register these jobs. I look at, I look at the registration mark and I move this side first. So I'm, I'm making sure that I'm looking at the registration mark and using the micro on the same side. And then what I do is get the horizontal lines lined up. So right now I'm not worrying about these vertical lines in the square and the center line. I'm only worrying about my horizontal lines. I'm lining those up first. So I'm on this micro registration and I'm getting this one lined up, which looks pretty good to me right now. So I'm gonna bring it over to this side now I'm going to line up the horizontal lines on that one. And you can see what micro registration does. It's moving ever so slightly. That's why they call it micro registration. So there we go. That looks good to me. Come back over here, make sure that one stayed in. So now I have all my horizontal lines lined up here. What I'm going to do is use the last micro registration to bring the whole screen over and line up the vertical lines. It's actually going to go toward me a little bit. See there. So when I bring it over with the, with the last registration, the whole screen moves over a little bit and all my vertical lines line up. And then through this screen, we can see that our reg mark underneath is totally blacked out. That's what we're looking for. We've effectively registered that one. So I'm going to go ahead and lock this down. And you almost kind of do this a little bit carefully. You're not wrenching down one side and then wrenching down the other. You do them both gradually because <clears throat> you don't really want your screen to move in the clamp. You don't want your print head to move. All right, so we got this color where we want it. This is our top color. Usually I'd start with the bottom color. I generally do things in the order that I print them, but we did this one first, so no biggie. We're gonna go ahead and go to the white one. We're gonna bring it down and just to see how close we are, just for fun, Let's bring it down, see where it's landing. Eh, it's pretty close. It's like an eighth of an inch off, something like that. Pretty cool. So we'll loosen our print head here. And when we loosen the print head, it enables us to use the micro registration to get the film perfectly registered, the screen perfectly registered. So I'm gonna repeat the same process I did on the last one. I'm gonna get those horizontal lines into place with my micro. On this side, I'm going to check this one. All right, so I've gotten the horizontal lines where I want them. I'm going to bring this over. And you can see I brought the whole screen over toward me this way. And all of these registration marks are blacked out. Perfect. Our, our colors are registered. We're ready for a test print. All right, so now we're at the point where we're going to do a test print. I got my white Plastisol ink. I'm running a 7022 Cool White from International Coatings, and this is a 50-50 cotton polyester blend ink. It's a high opacity, nice and smooth and creamy. I like to give my Plastisol inks a stir before we put them in the screen just to loosen them up a little bit. It's always a best practice to loosen up your ink. Nice and creamy, that's what we're looking for. All right, let's put some on the screen. We've labeled our screens, so we have this one's labeled white. That's the one we want to put it on. Very small font, but you can see it, white. So this print, uh, this print's going to be a white underbase with the color on top, and we have the white underbase so that our top color is really going to pop when we print it. That's what we're looking for. So put a nice amount of ink there. Set this over here, and I'm going to grab my other color. And today we're running with uh, 6129 Lime Green. This is a cool color. Should look nice on top of the white underbase. Give that a stir, nice and creamy. Beautiful. OK. 
Okay, this is probably way more than I need, but it's fun to put on there, so. All right, we're gonna grab some squeegees now. Got a nice aluminum handle squeegee here. We are running a 70 durometer blade, which is nice, good all around blade for, for most of these inks. I'll put that right here. I'll push that ink back a little bit so the squeegee doesn't fall down. You make the ink well hold the squeegee so it, it doesn't slip and fall into the ink. It's one of the sev seven deadly sins of screen printing is to drop your squeegee into your ink. Okay, we're going to go with this yellow jobber here. Make sure that the edge is nice. There's nothing stuck on there. Cool. All right, so got our white squeegee. Green sque squeegee, let's load a shirt. I'm gonna start with a gray shirt on here. This is a size XL, gray Heather T. So here's how to load a shirt in a nutshell real quick. I'm gonna grab it by the bottom. I'm gonna put it about three quarters, three, three quarters onto the plat and you're gonna clear it underneath and pull it all the way on. So now I can see my neck hole, my neck is pretty much lined up in the middle. So all I have to do is lift this up off the plat and bring it back and drop it in this scenario here. I have the seam just hanging off the edge of the platen. I've lined up my print onto the screen so that it's gonna look good on that drop. I'm gonna go ahead and run this underneath the flash dryer just to get it warmed up. We have some water-based pellet adhesive on these pallets, which is heat activated. So when you heat it up, it gets a little stickier. We definitely don't want the shirt to move in between shirt colors that we're printing, because if it moves, your second color will not line up. All right, flash dryer is on, it's nice and hot. Go ahead and run the first layer of white. So we're gonna do one, we're gonna do a print flash print with the white. One layer, flash it, second layer, and then we'll print the top color. I'm gonna go ahead and push this one. Some people push, some people pull. I generally do both, just not on the same print. Looks pretty good, we'll get that underneath our flash dryer. So I can tell right now on this gray Heather shirt, we're not gonna need two layers of white ink. We're gonna roll with one layer of white ink. When we run this test print on a black shirt, we probably will need two layers of white because we want our white to be very bright and should be good there. Now I'm gonna bring my second color, our lime green. Gonna make sure that my print is not super hot because what can happen if you, if you get your ink too hot, you leave it under your flash too long, you bring it back over, you bring the next screen over the top of it to print your, your color on top, what'll happen is it'll be so hot that you'll cure your ink right into your mesh. Then you'll spend the next half hour trying to get your ink out of your stencil so that you can run your test print. So I always wanna feel that, especially when you're in the, in the test print phase, just to make sure that our print's not too hot. It's dry to the touch, but it's not, uh, not so hot that it burns your hand. So here we go, we're gonna flood the screen. I'm gonna go ahead and do a little push print. We'll go one more. And we'll have a look at it. Pretty nice, pretty nice. So in this case, our registration is not super tight, right? We have, there is areas all around our top color, areas of white, so we don't have to worry about colors lining up perfectly. But it looks awesome and we're gonna roll with it. Okay, so we have our test print going. <clears throat> I'm pretty happy with how our test print looks at this point. I'm gonna go ahead and take that off, run it through our conveyor dryer, and I'm gonna grab some screen tape, and I'm gonna tape the bottom of the screen to mask off our registration marks. Obviously, we don't wanna print our registration marks onto the, the finished shirt. So we've arranged our registration marks strategically also so that they can be masked off with one piece of tape for each group of reg marks. So get in here. Mask off all three of those. That's great. Another piece of tape to mask off the bottom. That's great. So we don't put the, we don't block out the reg marks on top with the tape because the squeegee going over the tape will peel it up and eventually your ink will go through the open area that, you, that you've masked off. So use tape on the bottom to mask off your registration marks. It works out a lot better. 
Okay, we'll mask off the white. Same deal, one piece of tape. Sometimes if you miss the bottom, you'll see a, like a little tiny dot on your, on your next shirt. So you wanna try to be thorough and make sure that you got the whole registration mark taped off. On a lot of prints, you have to be careful not to mask off the bottom of your text. Happens very easily. So you really have to be attentive to these details to get your print right. All right, looks good. I didn't, I didn't mask off the bottom of our S because that would be bad, so good to go there. I'm gonna use the same shirt that we did the first test print on. Right here, we're gonna run, <laughs> we're gonna run it on the back. Gonna load the shirt, same process. Get it about three quarters of the way on, then pull it, clear it underneath, pull it all the way on. I'm gonna lift up and I'm gonna lift to the left a little bit to get my shirt centered. Then I'm gonna pull it all the way on again. Then I'm gonna lift it up. This time I'm hanging about an inch off of my platen because a back print in general is gonna be an inch to an inch and a half lower on the shirt. So here we go. I'm gonna bring our white down, gonna flood it. You get a nice push stroke. You hear that zip sound. You really want to hear that because you want to use the sharpest part of your squeegee to shear the ink onto the shirt. You also want to make sure that after you've cleared the ink through the screen that you don't look anywhere in the open mesh and see a bunch of ink stuck still in the screen. If that happens, if you see a big glob of ink in any of your open area, then you're gonna look at your print and chances are it's gonna be missing from the print as well. So you wanna clear all of your screen mesh through when you're, when you're pushing the squeegee over the ink. Flash dry that one about 10, 20, 30, 40 seconds, 50, 60 seconds. So just touch that, it's not quite dry to the touch. We're gonna to put it back under. It's important that you don't test your wet ink with your whole hand and you don't go like this because all you need is pick up wet ink and then you dab it on other areas of your print. So you don't want to do that. That's one of the deadly sins? Just yeah, it's one. It's lower on the deadly sin scale. It's like 12, 13. Okay, our ink is dry to the touch. That's good. If you want to get in here, I've noticed this is how the level of attention to detail that you have to have. So I'm looking at this underbase and I see a tiny dot right here. That's, that shouldn't be in our print, right? And this is a common occurrence. Uh, different blanks will have different amounts of lint. Some blanks don't have a lot of lint. Some, have a, some do have a lot. You really have to be careful with this because <clears throat> what'll happen is this dot right here on the bottom of our screen will block out ink from pushing through right there. And it'll create that sort of pinhole effect. So trying to get it off of there. And I've gotten it out of there. Since we have that divot there, I'm gonna hit it again to fill in that little divot. So I don't like divots in my prints. All right, nice and clean and bright. We've gotten rid of that divot. That's good. We're gonna dry it again. Throughout your print run, you always want to keep an eye out for things like pinholes and lint blocking out your open area in your mesh. You always want to be looking for that stuff. You always want to be looking for wet ink on your fingers because that will get on your clothes, get in your car on your way home, all that kind of stuff. All right, so our second layer is dry. We're going to go ahead and bring down our green. Perfect, right where we want it. We'll flood it. Clear it, we'll run it one more time. Clear it, and voila, we have a nice, bright, opaque print. And you see it's popping even more than it did with one layer of white. This has two layers of white and a layer of green on top. Very nice, very bright, nice finished product. I'm pretty happy with that. Go ahead and run that through our conveyor. 
So we want to run it through the conveyor, not super fast. We want to do it at a slow to medium pace. We have two layers of Plastisol ink on this shirt. We need that ink to heat from all sides, underneath the top. We need it to cure all the way through. If we run it real fast and hot, the very top of the ink is going to get cured. But guess what? The bottom of that white ink layer is not going to get cured all the way. If the bottom layer is not cured, you're going to put it in the wash machine. It's going to crack, peel, etc. So with your conveyor dryer, you want to run it through slow enough so the whole ink kind of cooks. And that's what we're going for. Boom, right there. Beautiful. All right, so in conclusion, we have nice test print. We have two layers of white ink, one top layer of green ink on this one. We ran this print on a 160 mesh. Uh, this would probably look good on a 130, 160, 180 mesh. If you really wanted a lighter ink deposit, you could go up to a 180 or a 200 mesh and you're gonna lay down less ink. It'll be a little bit thinner. It might not pop as much, but this could be printed on, like I said, 130, 180, or even 200, but 160 is a sweet spot for us. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and run this one through the conveyor. I'll show you the gray one again. Looking pretty good. This is what we're going for. Nice, crisp, clean edges. And hopefully you got some knowledge out of this video. You got some value out of this video and please, by all means, check out our channel. We, we have a bunch of other videos that I feel are useful on there as well. And leave us a comment if you have any questions about any of the process here. All of these products can be found on our website at www.norcalsps.com. And you can always call us with questions, 916-534-8337. Hope you enjoyed the video and thanks a lot for watching.